computer. Okay, I think that we can get started um, again. So um, there were no questions during the break, which is okay, so that I could take a break. Uh, but still, there was this other question that was in the air that I was asking. So uh, we have this uh, declaration of vector space, of vector as G being an instance of a vector space. And I was asking, why does this work? What guarantees that vector as G is an instance of an additive group? And uh, I was just, I just wanted to lift this mystery because it also took me a little bit to understand it. And the idea is the following. If you go back, uh, if you go back to the beginning of this file, you will see that uh, uh, we are importing here another file, which is DSS of math algebra. And if we go into this DSS of math algebra, um, we will see that uh, at a certain point, we are declaring um, functions to be instances of uh, add group if this function have a target A, which is itself an instance of add group. And uh, this is the culprit, or in fact, this is the one that enables the declaration to work. So if we comment out, this one and we um, try to load this file, we see that it type checks. But if we go back now to the previous file and we try to load it again, then we should get an error. And this error comes because of the fact that we do not have available any longer um, functions, which are those which is under the sign of the data constructor in the declaration of vector SG, we do not have function and as instances of, uh, um, of this type class. And uh, so if, again, we reload, after having introduced the declaration. Okay, here there is something <laughs> potentially wrong. So let's try me to load again this file. This is okay. And then we go back to this one and we load it again. Um, you excellent to pressed P on line 118 a while ago. Pardon? You accidentally pressed P on line 118 a while ago. Oh. Instead of control P, I presume. Mm -hmm. So let me see, 118. Yes. Thanks, Patrick. So that's most likely was the mistake. Let's try to reload again, and that works. Okay, so that was the answer. So this works. So this declaration, vector SG is an instance of vector space, works because of the fact that we have already granted that functions um, from G to S are instances of uh, uh, add group. And this again, it works because of the fact that S is a field. So this is a very clever implementation and it took me a little bit to understand it. And so this is also another thing that I wanted to tell you. So one, uh, one, uh, so one usage of uh, of this lecture and actually of this file for you in the future is also to have a kind of template for starting working on uh, linear algebra and on vectors and on vector spaces. So what you have here is a kind of uh, 
starting point uh, you can build upon, for instance, in a small project. As you have seen, it has been carefully crafted and uh, uh, there has been a lot of work going into the definition of this data structure. And so take advantage of it and remember if you uh, are in the position of uh, working with uh, linear transformation with vector spaces, that this is a piece of software that you will be able to reuse. So now back to uh, the point that we were, we had uh, discussed a little bit uh, um, this implementation, this instance of uh, vector spaces, vector SG. And there are here uh, just two auxiliary functions, which are going to be very useful in what is coming up, which are just the implementation of uh, the canonical basis vectors. And uh, there is this function which is called E, which uh, um, takes a G which is equality comparable. This is something which is an additional constraint that we need for this implementation. It takes a ring S, it doesn't take a field S because of the fact that we will use it also in situation in which S is actually not a field, but just the ring. And uh, uh, it defines a function that associates to a value of this index set G, a vector of type SG. And this is done in the following way, that uh, uh, the ith component, so the ith canonical vector is the vector that uh, is defined in terms of the function, which uh, uh, is everywhere zero, ex except at the uh, value i of g. So this is function is, is defined here. And it says that is i j is equal to one if i is equal to j and otherwise zero. This is the Kronecker delta function. And this is the one which is used in order to define these base vectors. Um, the, um, The next that comes up is, as I was saying, more or less the core of uh, this uh, um, chapter seven, and we will have to work a little bit on it. Um, let me just go back to the notes. So here are the canonical basis implementation, the is function that's not perhaps very interesting, but here is a point that uh, that we have to understand. So to understand, to remember. So we have started observing the fact that uh, uh, a vector V can be decomposed uh, on, on a basis. And we have now an implementation for the basis vectors um, E for the canonical basis vector C, and therefore we have this kind of decomposition. So here, look, this again is code that we have looked. This is a kind of property. And an interesting property, uh, an, an interesting question here is what kind of equality is involved here? There is again a claim here. We can see that as expected, um, every vector, every V uh, or every function of type G to S is a linear combination of vectors of the canonical vector. So if we take this function small v and we construct a vector out of it, we obtain a vector that can be expressed as the sum of the uh, coefficient times the basis vector. And again, all in, in spite of the fact that this is a specification, it's not a, it's not, it's not a program, it is usually to think about what is the equality which is implied here. And this is an equality between functions on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, we have function, although wrapped in this data constructor. 
And uh, this is the uh, so-called characterizing equations for vectors. So this is an identity that we will use a number of times. And uh, this uh, operation or this sum on the right-hand side, it is uh, uh, called the linear combination of V and of E. So this is this bit here that I have uh, uh, highlighted. Uh, there is an implementation of linear combination that we are not going to look at at this point. Um, it is interesting, but perhaps uh, it is uh, uh, more important for, for later. We will we'll, perhaps we will look at it later if we have some time. For the time being, we just fix this idea that a vector uh, which is constructing with a function small v is, can be expressed as a linear combination of the coefficient represented by that function and of the basis vector. And uh, um, it is a good exercise to make yourself clear that this identity actually holds by just uh, uh, applying the definition of scalar vector multiplication and of sum, which is implied in this definition. So now, uh, before getting to 7.2, there is an exercise. And uh, this is an exercise that uh, I find it a little bit difficult, but it is also very interesting. I'm not going to discuss this exercise now. Um, we will do that if there is some time left, or we can do that perhaps uh, uh, in an exercise session, or perhaps we can do it next week if there is some time left. Uh, just do it like that. You think about this exercise, and then you will be able to read these notes that contain some kind of uh, hints and the beginning, if you want, of a solution for that exercise. And then after you have these notes in your hand, you try to solve it. And if you have trouble solving it, you get in touch or you ask the assistance. It's, it's a nice exercise, but it would take too much time uh, to do it here. So we skip this exercise, but as I said, you had more or less a sketch of the solution in the handwritten notes. And we start with linear transformation, which is in fact the most important part in this lecture. That's the core of this lecture. From the point of view of the implementation, it is surprisingly short. So if we look at section 7.2, at the implementation of section 7.2, there is in fact very little. So there is a definition of a data type matrix, which is defined uh, as a function that takes value in an index set and returns vector. There is a definition of an operation between matrices and vectors, which is the matrix vector multiplication. And then there is a definition of a function that just transposes a matrix, is switches rows and columns, and nothing else. But still, this section 7.2 is quite long, and also it contains some important concepts. So there is a little bit of an imbalance here between the, uh, the implementation and uh, the content of this section. And in the next half an hour, I want to try to make sure that we get through the, uh, the main ideas of this section without getting lost, uh, so to say, in details, in computational details or in translation. So the first step is the idea of linear transformations. So this is something that you have possibly already seen many times during this course. And it is introduced here from the very beginning. 
as a property of functions that map vectors into vectors of elements of a vector space into elements of another vector space, but defined on the same set of scalars. So you see the only difference here between the source and the target of this F is the index set G prime on the right hand side and G on the left hand side. So uh, the, the notion of linear transformation is again that uh, of uh, uh, that we can express in terms of homomorphism as we have seen many times. And it is uh, collected in these two properties. So the two properties here, they specify the notion of linearity. F is a linear transform transformation. If it maps the operations in vector as follows. So F of the sum is the sum of the F. And F of S multiplied times a vector is S multiplied by F of that vector. So these, these are the notion of linearity. And, uh, um, and the important observation, and in fact, one of the core messages of, uh, of this section is the fact that because of the fact that we can push this F through the representation of the vector, which is what is done here. You see here, we start with F of a vector on the left hand side, on the right hand side, we have F applied to the sum. And then we use linearity to push F through the elements of the sum. And we end up with this being the linear combination of the representation of the original vector times the uh, composition of F with the basis vector. So this is, this is the um, if you want the crucial observation, the fact that we can describe the action of a linear function f on an arbitrary vector, on an arbitrary element of this vector space, by just prescribing how f transforms the basis vectors. You see, this is the, the only bit of information that we have to provide in order to be able to compute the result of applying F to an arbitrary vector. So we can determine the whole function F by just looking at how F X on the basis vectors and in particular on the canonical basis vectors. And uh, there is a, um, there is here a notation which is introduced, the composition of, uh, sorry, the composition of uh, F with the function that gives the canonical basis vectors is, denoted by M. So this is going to be uh, used in the rest of this section 7.2. So one question, one natural question is the type of M. What is the type of M? So what does, what does uh, M take as argument and what is the target of M? So what is the shape of this M? Well, this is the composition between E and F. So the type of F is something that we have here, right? And the type of E is something that, well, the type of E, I'm going to write it here. The type of E is something that takes G into vector of SG. And then the type of F composed with E should be clear. Um, just as a remark, so there are a lot of examples in computer science in which you have this kind of situation in which you are able to define a function, which is defined on a type, by just uh, 
defining how this function on, operates on a finite set of situation, on a finite set of cases. For instance, when you define a function on natural number, it is, usual, it is often the case that you pattern match on the data constructor of natural number. Do you define that function for the case in which the argument is zero and the case in which the argument is the successor of a natural number. So here we have a, a similar situation. In order to define this function f, we only need to say how it acts, how it maps the base vector. And that's enough to define the function on the whole space. So this is the important message of this uh, the first important consequence of linearity, and perhaps the most important consequence that will come up over and over again in applications. So um, there is, a, so far we have not introduced any kind of coding. There is just specification here, specification here, and then there is a property which is a consequence of this specification. And I would like to discuss a little bit these properties now. And the property says that if we apply F to a vector V, and then we take the G prime component of this result. So remember that applying F to a vector gives a vector in uh, defined on a, gives a function from G prime to S. So we can, we can evaluate this function at g prime, that this is equivalent to computing the linear combination of V and of the function that is defined in terms of mg, which is a vector, evaluated at g prime. So um, there is a little bit, there is something a little bit suspicious here that I would like to discuss, and this is done in the next slide. So uh, this is the equality that we want to discuss and that we had in the previous page. So, um, right, so let me do something like that. So this is the equality. So uh, the G prime component of F applied to this vector is this linear combination. So first of all, I want to uh, make the observation that uh, um, this is the type of F. So F is a function from vector SG to vector SG prime. And F, as we have seen before, M, M is equal to F following E. It goes therefore from G into vector S G prime. So uh, that also implies that this function that maps a G into M G at G prime is a function that goes from the index space G into the set of scalars. So, mg bank g prime is a scalar. But uh, if you remember a little bit the, uh, the type of this linear combination that we have not in fact discussed, but uh, that we can see, um, that we can see, let me, let me show you where we can see it, wait a moment. Well, perhaps it's usual to go back to the code. Um, we can see it from this definition, which is also in the, in the book a few, or in my notes a few pages before. So the first argument of linear combination is a function from G to S, but the second one is a function from G to V. So, uh, and the result is a vector. But uh, what we have here is a function from G to S. It's not a function from G to vector, 
to a vector. And again, this definition is correct and it works because of the fact that uh, scalars are themselves vector. So this is because of the first instance of vector spaces that we derived in the very beginning or that we defined in the very beginning of this lecture, which was uh, this first example. So a field S formed with itself a vector space. And so the scalars are themselves vector and therefore there is no problem with uh, with the type of this function. And this is perhaps something that uh, uh, at least I, I found a little bit disturbing. Perhaps if you read carefully the text, you could stumble on this point. And so here you have an explanation of why it works. So the, um, the second thing that I wanted to say is that if we spell out the computation of, uh, of applying a linear function f to a vector in detail, which is what I've done here. So we see that what is actually going on here is that we are multiplying these vectors by the uh, coefficient of our vector v. So this looks suspiciously like a matrix vector multiplication, like a multiplication between a matrix whose columns are m0 to mn with the vector uh, which is constructed in terms of these uh, components v. So, here we are going to do something which is a little bit of a bold step. We are going to introduce or to define or to specify uh, an equivalence between linear combination of Vm on the right hand side, which is something that we know what it means, and something on the left hand side that contains two new elements. The first one is a uh, mul mv meant to mean matrix vector multiplication. And the other one, which has then to be the first argument of this yet undefined function, but which is meant to represent a matrix whose column are m0 to mn. So this is the idea. So uh, we want now to make a link between this operation of applying a linear transformation to a vector and what we know from linear algebra as being a kind of primitive operation, the multiplication of a matrix with a vector. And by doing so, we also introduce this idea of a matrix, which is not yet been defined so far. And if you remember, or if we go back for a while, to the, um, to the code, I was telling you that these are also the only computation which are defined in this section 7.2. So the notion of a matrix parameterized into, on two indexes, G and G prime, as a function that goes from G prime uh, to vector SG, so that let's say, a matrix M of this type applied to a G prime goes, gives the G prime row of that vector and an operation of matrix vector multiplication and of transposition. So let me make just a short break with the uh, recording. Stop recording.